Hey, this is Caesar from Weberus, and in this video, I'm going to tell you what faceted navigation is, why you should care, especially if you have a large e-commerce website, how to identify if you have a problem, and solutions on how to fix it. All right, so let's break down what is faceted navigation. It's how e-commerce websites allow for filtering and sorting of results based off of product attributes. So here as an example, if you're on the Nike store and you're looking at different types of shoes, uh, by using the filters, you could narrow down to precisely the type of shoe that you want, whether it's a high top, a low top, whether it's a running shoe or whether it's a cross trainer, the color, the size, what have you. <clears throat> so that is the purpose of using these filters. And that is what faceted navigation is. This is Google's explanation of what faceted navigation is and what you need to be aware of if you're using it on your website. So faceted navigation, such as filtering by color price range can be helpful for visitors, but it's often not search friendly since it creates many combinations of URLs with duplicate content. They may not index the page accurately because indexing signals are diluted between the duplicate versions. Why does this matter? Well, these filtered pages are generally considered to be low quality pages because they're thin or duplicate pages and Having a faceted navigation can create an endless loop of accessible pages on your website. So what this boils down to is having a faceted navigation feature on your site is very useful to the people that are on your site to be able to drill down and find the specific product that they're looking for. However, these pages, these filtered pages generally create a link, a URL in and of itself. And this could then become a problem for SEO because you end up potentially with tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of variations of these pages that aren't really a page that serve a value or a purpose in and of themselves. It's just a pared down version of what the original category page is before you started adding all of the filters. So Google assigns a crawl budget to your website. They don't crawl every single page of your site. So if Google is spending time and resources crawling these low quality pages, then they may not be able to get to your more important pages. So now we're gonna get into uh, how to identify if you have an issue and how to fix these issues. This is an example of a website that implemented faceted navigation towards the beginning to middle of April. And as you can see here, towards the end of the month going into May, their traffic really took a nosedive. And when we took a look at how Google was crawling their site, they were crawling a lot of these faceted navigation pages that had uh, a bunch of parameters in them. And they weren't crawling their more important pages as often as they were were before. And there isn't always a direct correlation between how often Google crawls a page and how that page will rank. But by them adding, basically doubling the size of their website overnight with these uh, faceted navigation pages, it created a bunch of low quality pages. And as you can see here, it had a major negative impact on their traffic. Let's take a look at an example of what a faceted navigation journey would look like. So if you were to arrive at this shoelace store on the homepage, not a problem, no SEO impact there. Uh, you navigate over to the 3M laces category page. And these category pages are generally very valuable for e-commerce sites because uh, they tend to rank very well for people that are searching for non-specific products. Then uh, on that category page, you use the filter to filter for black 3M shoelaces. And this page could still be potentially valuable for search because there may be a significant amount of people that are searching for black 3M laces. And if that's the case and you have the inventory, uh, this is not a problem at all for SEO. But once you start getting more and more down the rabbit hole when it comes to these uh, filter uh, filtering parameters, as you can see here, now that you've added a size 50 inch black 3M laces, uh, and you can continue to, to pile on even more and more. And this is what I was referring to as, you know, Google can then start crawling these pages in lieu of your more important pages. And that's where you can have a problem because these pages, once you start getting down into two, three, four uh, parameters, they're gonna be very thin. And in many cases, they're gonna have maybe one or two products on them. And they're just duplicate pages. It's just a more pared down version of that original page that we started on, which was the 3M laces.
All right, so now that we have established what faceted navigation is and what impact it can have on your site, now let's talk about how you can check to see if you have these issues. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is to make sure that you're not already disallowing or no indexing these parameters. So you need to know what are the parameters that are used within your faceted navigation. And then you wanna just check your robots.txt file to see if that's already being handled in some way there. The other thing you can do, uh, this would be done at the individual level, is to use Google Search Console, use the URL inspection tool, drop it in there. It's gonna tell you if the page has been crawled, when it was last crawled, and if it's indexed. And the other, the third way to do this, and this is probably gonna be the best way, is to run a full crawl of your site and make note of these uh, these faceted navigation uh, URLs, the parameters that are being used, and you can do a site search uh, using those parameters to see if there are any of, of those pages inside of Google's index, and also make sure that they aren't already being handled by something like a canonical or a no index tag. All right, so now let's talk about some of the methods that you can use to fix these faceted navigation issues. The first and probably the most scalable and easiest to implement is setting the canonical tag on the pages that have these long filter parameters in the URL and just canonicalizing everything to the root category page. In this case here would be the, three, the 3M laces category page set as the canonical. The downside here is you may be too aggressive with this. So as I mentioned before, uh, some of these faceted navigation pages actually have some value in terms of search, uh, search volume. People actually looking for, and the example I gave was the black 3M laces. So if you have that page canonicalized to the 3M laces page, then you're gonna lose the ability to capture that traffic. So just keep that in mind. Ideally, if you have, uh, a more level of granularity control of canonicals as to where uh, where they're implemented in terms of how many parameters uh, are have to be in the URL before the page gets canonicalized, then that would be ideal. The next option is to use a, a JavaScript Ajax call. Now, what this does is it keeps the, the page from reloading and it, it also eliminates the the href, which is what Google uses to follow links. So basically what happens is when the user uses the filter, it's going to filter the results on the page, but it's not going to create a, a new page load. So it's just gonna change on the fly. Now, if you use this method, um, it's recommended that the UR, that you do have the URL changed. So that way, if the person that is uh, using the filter and wants to save that particular configuration, that they can bookmark it and then when they get back to it, it's still, it's gonna show the page that they had with all of their filters in place. Now, this method is more advanced and more complicated. You'll definitely need a developer to implement. So uh, it's probably not going to be the most viable option for uh, most websites, unless it's a large e-commerce site that you know you have your, your developers that can implement this. The third option, uh, we talked a little bit about this before, is in your robots.txt, you can disallow the crawling of those parameters. Uh, you can also set them to no index from the robots.txt uh, file. Just bear in mind, if you set it to, uh, to disallow the crawl and there's people that are linking to your site or to those URLs with the faceted navigation in them, they could still be indexed. Okay, so lastly here is to use the no index meta tag along with the no follow attribute in the the uh, internal links. So what this is, it's uh, it's more of a directive telling Google that even if they were to come across a page that has parameters that you do not want indexed, this directive tells them to not to index the page. Uh, and for the no follow, what that does is you can see we have an example here where all of the uh, filters on the left hand side have the red, uh, the red highlight around it, which tells you that it's a no follow link. So it's discouraging Google from crawling those links in the first place. All right. So hopefully by now, you know what faceted navigation is, what are the issues that it can cause that will hinder your SEO and a few methods that you can implement to fix these issues. Now, if you need help with stuff like this, I may be a little biased, but I would recommend the best SEO agency in the world, 
reaching out to us at webris.org. We'd love to talk to you more about how we can help you dominate your SEO.